Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so potential buyers have more information about the seller and the business to help them make a buying decision further down the road. Today, we'll be talking about an info product business for sale and I have the seller with me today. So Martin, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. How are you doing? All good. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to talk about your business as well. It's in the children's niche and that's something close to my heart given that I'm a young father of a, a little toddler. So definitely close to my heart. But just before we talk more about, let me give a brief summary of your business for our listeners. So today's business is an info product, Amazon KDP and display advertising business created in March 2017 in the children niche. The average monthly revenue for the business is $12,523 and it makes an average of $7,919 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are a domain and all of the site's contents and files, two additional domains, an email list with over 15,000 subscribers stored on ActiveCampaign, an Amazon KDP account with six ebooks, and social media accounts, as well as employee contracts. You can head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 53472 to learn more about the business. And if you want to start your due diligence, remember to unlock the listing if you're interested in purchasing the asset. You know, Martin, that's a very general overview about the business, but let's find out a bit about yourself. Can you share with me what your background is in building or running online businesses? Yeah, absolutely. I started life as a teacher for about 12 years and then I've sort of transitioned over into online businesses over the last four years and this business it started life through education and through my experiences with teaching and education and this was my first business that I set up and the business grown over the last four years it's essentially started as a blog with lots of workshops attached to it as well and over, particularly over the last year, the blog has really grown and traffic has really exploded, which is fantastic to see. We run lots of info products now. We've got seven up and running, but there's lots more in the pipeline potentially as well. And uh, lots of books as well we are selling that link to the niche. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely sounds like you know, you've know you grown it, you've scaled it. So it's got lots of opportunities for sure. You were saying that this is the first online business that you created. What gave you the inspiration to come up with this one? Yeah, it was through my work in education. It was being a teacher and seeing there was a gap for real practical, inspirational advice, particularly working with younger children. There were lots of the training courses that were available to the teachers I was working with were quite kind of theoretical and a bit dull as well. So it started off as a way of getting a bit of excitement and interest into training courses. I was running workshops and conferences and things like that and trying to make it exciting and and inspire people and then it just developed into more of an online business where it's you know everything now is online all the workshops all the training is online and it's all targeting key areas of early education that is that's kind of the idea as well as the books as well the books are targeting key areas of early childhood education gotcha i mean just now as i was going through the business's details i noticed that it's monetizing it through a few different ways. Can you briefly share with me how the business makes money? Yeah, about 80% at the moment of the revenue comes through info products, the online courses. And that is probably the big sort of feature of, of the company and taking it forward. I think that would be that should be the, the priority. Also, I think it's about 15% of the revenue is through books as well, both ebooks and paperbacks. Those are available on Amazon. And lots of the books have several hundred uh, positive reviews one book's got about 600 five-star reviews so they're all a lot they've been read by many many people where one of the books has been read by about twenty thousand people in both that's in some free downloads but also just 
the number of buyers that have been around the world for that book as well. It also making money through ads as well, through Azoic ads. I think it's made about $900 in the last month through Azoic ads. And that's kind of growing month on month. The blog traffic has gone up about 5x over the last year. It's now about 70,000 page views a month. And this time last year, it was about 15,000 page views a month. So that is rapidly increasing. And the ad revenue is going up alongside that as well. There's currently no affiliates on the site, but that is a big short-term goal to put lots of affiliates on there as well and utilize the amount of traffic we're getting from the blog. But at the moment, the blog is more it's generating money through the ads and also through generating interest in the books and in the online courses as well. Yeah, that's great. Definitely sounds like the business has been on a steady upward curve you know, since you started it for sure. And I think you touched on a few potential opportunities there, which we'll dig into a bit further on in the interview. I uh, just want to ask you though, I mean, because the business has grown to a considerable size. So our listeners will be wondering why you're selling the business right now instead of staying with it and growing it. Yeah, absolutely. I've got four online businesses now, whereas till about a year ago, this was my main business I was putting all the time into. But now I've got three others as well, more in their infancy. They're all blog driven. They're in sort of quite big niches. And my time is more split than it has been in the past. And it would be nice as well, a bit of a cash injection into these three other sites to really get them up and running. And they're all using a similar kind of structure to the education site. It's kind of blog driven, lots and lots of content. And the plan is to get lots of courses onto those as well. So it's just a case of bit of a cash injection, get a bit a bit of a team going and grow the other three sites. Also to an extent as well, I've kind of worked in education through about 15 years now. I was a teacher for 11 or 12 years. I've run this business now for four years as well. So it's been a long time sort of thinking about education all the time, basically. So it would be quite nice just to take a step back and just concentrate on other things because I've done a huge amount of education over the past decade and a half. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I think that seems to be a common trend among many sellers in our circle. You know, they start off with one business and then I guess they get hit by the entrepreneurial bug pretty early on, right? Like they see success with the first business and then they go on to start a few others or acquire a few others. And yeah, and then the time gets split amongst all these different projects. So it definitely makes sense as well as wanting to take a step back as well. Because like you say, your head space has just been in education for, like you said, the past 12 years. So it makes sense to have a, a bit of change of pace there for sure. And I just want to ask you then, Martin, Based on your experience of building this business in particular, was there anything that you learned that you'd apply to future sites or businesses? That's a good question. I suppose in building this business, I've had a sort of experimented in the past with pretty much everything. We've had a go at Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, we've done everything really. And I just found in the end what actually did really sort of move the needle, which has been email marketing and the blog, basically. Those are the two. And so I think, yeah, in the future, I've got more of a like a laser focus on what works. So the three businesses I'm running at the same time now, the big focus is just the blog at the moment, getting lots and lots, lots of traffic. And then when we've got that traffic, then developing the email list, launching courses. So I've got more of a kind of logical sequence now that I'm following. Whereas with this business, certainly in the past, it was more of a kind of have a go of everything, see what works. It's much more streamlined now because we knew like I now know what does work. You know, the blog's working, the email marketing's working, and the courses are the way to go, as well as the books are good revenue as well. I'm very passive, the books as well. It just kind of trickles in every month from Amazon, which is all good. But that's probably the thing. Yeah, the laser focus is probably the big one. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. I guess on that note then, was there anything that you tried that didn't really work for you? You know, that just wasn't giving you the ROI that you're hoping for? Things like Twitter, I suppose it would have been. Yeah, it was a huge amount of time. Just, you know, you have to probably post multiple times a day on Twitter to really get any traction at all. And hard to focus on other things when you're just trying to load up your Twitter feed all the time. And a huge time suck as well. So that would be definitely one. I didn't have much success on that Instagram, though. I think that was probably just my, probably more down to my lack of skills in that area, to be honest. I think Instagram will be a possibility for this business. It is very visual. And all the blog is extremely visual. Lots of useful photos and original, like, photos and videos and things. So that would uh, be possible in a more skillful person's hands but yeah things like that i'd say just and probably just spreading out too far as well is probably not good and it's better just to focus on one or two you know traffic sources i think 
Yeah, like you were saying, it's pretty good to have a laser focus on certain things as soon as you know what's working. And it's good to sort of double down on that and make sure that's really streamlined and optimized. I guess in terms of, you know, because we were mentioning about traffic, what do you currently do in terms of marketing for the business right now? Yeah, well, the blog just sort of runs itself. Currently, I've written the entire blog myself. That would definitely be an area for growth for someone coming in to outsource content. I've got quite a large hit list of about 70 articles that are next on my list. And I'm thinking about outsourcing myself. But that potentially if someone bought it quite soon, that would be, I think, something to definitely look at. Email marketing is a big one with our company as well. We have 15,800 people currently subscribed to the email list. And so communicating them through email to them has had lots of benefits in sales and engagement. We've won a couple of awards recently. It was quite the marketing efforts. It was the a couple of UK-based awards, like a business enterprise award. And there was another one as well. I think it was like a blogging, some kind of UK blogging award. That's just there. Uh, well, that's kind of nice to just get the message out there. And we've had a couple of big free book promotions that have been really good for the marketing efforts and getting the awareness of the company out there as well. I ran a three-day free book promotion for one of our books, and it was downloaded by, I think, more than 10,000 people, which was quite exciting. And it's just a good one, just the engagement and getting people aware of the company, as well as all the books linked to the courses as well. So there's always a chance of getting some people from the books over onto buying a course. Yeah, that's great. It sounds like you're doing something right since you've won an award for its blog content. So that sounds fantastic. I guess if we just then move over to sort of the day-to-day or even weekly tasks, can you just describe the type of work that you do to keep the business going? Creating new courses is always quite high on the priority list. I'm trying to create a new course about every once every two months at the moment. So that just involves pretty much all the courses feature myself and also some collaborators sometimes as well. So it's just a case of filming myself. I'd currently do the editing as well. That essentially be outsourced to someone else. And that's quite a big chunk of the time. Creating content in general, try and prioritize, you know, like uh, writing the blogs, creating videos and that kind of thing. Email marketing. That is the majority of my time. Gotcha. Okay. So are there any other employees associated with the business right now? Yeah, I've got a finance assistant. She just keeps a oversees the finances basically and there are sometimes you know customer service payments issues and things like that with the online courses and she just keeps track of that we sometimes have the schools that and the customers that go on our courses we have a facility where they can access the course and then pay within a month basically which works for a lot of them because they it's often paid through the local authorities so she will sometimes have to chase payments basically that's uh, her main role i've also got a couple of collaborators who i've written three of the books with and we've done some of the courses together as well so a couple of well three of the courses are a bit like partnerships where we've created them together myself and a co-creator and they take a share of the profits of the sales each month yeah that all makes sense i mean for someone because you've described you know, what you do on a day-to-day, even weekly, and also a monthly basis. But I mean, if someone was to step in after they acquire this business and they want to hit the ground running, but they don't have much experience with this niche or with info products, what would you recommend are some of the skills that they should you know, brush up on so that they can keep the momentum going? I think anyone with experience of Facebook advertising would potentially could do fantastically with this business. It's something I've not tried very slightly and I'm trying to learn the skills involved. But I think that is a huge way forward, experimenting with Facebook advertising. Also, anyone with email marketing experience as well, that is a big one for the info products as well. And things like you creating funnels and all that kind of thing, split testing, any of those skills. I've kind of sort of approached this industry, probably think my real strength is creating the content and you know, the high quality content that we've got on the site now, and the courses, books, and all that kind of thing. But I'm kind of very much in a kind of the learning phase of the entrepreneur side and creating funnels and this kind of stuff. But someone with experience, proven ability in doing that, I think would really hit the ground running really, really solidly. Also, anyone that's experienced of growing a blog, it could definitely be, you know, really expanded the blog. And it's not that much uh, action required. Um, there's I think there's 117 blogs at the moment that generate about 70,000 
page views. But I think that could be probably tripled with, if you doubled the amount of content, I think the page views would at least triple. And it's a very big niche as well. There's huge room for expansion. It'd just be a case of getting some reasonably good quality writers on there and going for it. And it could, you know, it could be the articles are ranking so much more quickly than they were when I started off. It would take a year or 15 months for anything to rank at all in the first couple of years, really, of that blog existing. But now, sometimes I can write an article and then a month later, it's ranking you know, in the top three. So it's much more responsive in Google now. It's got lots of organic backlinks. So there's been no dodgy link building or anything like that. It's just pure organic links. And yeah, it's just Google seems to like it. They like the blog and they're pushing everything towards the top now, which is all good. Yeah, that's right. They recently launched a, a new update, something to do with how it's indexed and in considering like the user experience and stuff. So for sure, it sounds like content is definitely proving valuable to the readers. I mean, you've talked uh, sort of throughout the interview about the different opportunities. If you did stay with the business and you were going to grow it, you've mentioned about you know, social media. If anyone has the right social media chops there, that would be one opportunity. I mean, what else would you say would be ways that you tried to grow and expand the business? Yeah, there's probably quite a few different avenues. I think Pinterest would be a good one. If anyone's got any experience of that, it's a very visual niche and it is quite female friendly as well. I think 90% of our email list are female. So it ticks all the kind of Pinterest boxes. So that'd be a good one for generating more blog traffic. Certainly expanding the blog, that would be definitely the way to go. Pretty much the other things I've you know, said, like the Facebook advertising, I've not really just dipped the toe into it, but I think all that kind of thing. Facebook advertising, generating funnels, onto the info products, that would definitely be the way to go. But potentially more courses as well, collaborations with you know, influencers in the industry, potentially paying them up front to create a course and then you know, marketing that on the website. You could potentially go into a collaboration with the influencers in the space. Particularly if they've got like a really big platform so they can advertise the course to their platform as well. There's lots of possibilities. You could even do reasonably high ticket courses at the moment they're reasonably expensive but you could try cheaper ones that were targeted at a more mass audience potentially that could be another possibility so lots of possible things that you could do to expand for sure yeah lots of avenues there as you've mentioned i mean i guess just to change gears a bit can you share with me what do you think are some of the risks that a buyer should be aware of if they were interested in acquiring this business yeah absolutely it's probably not as simple as other businesses it's not like you know you couldn't just let it sit there and it would just generate revenue month by month all by itself it will generate some revenue but quite a lot of revenue by itself but it does need a bit of active involvement particularly on the email marketing side of things i think so there is that it's not 100 percent passive at the moment so it could potentially be with all the right funnels and everything set up other risks it's a tricky one you know it's we have been changing times. Our business has changed quite a lot over the last three years in particular, particularly as it was mostly a real face-to-face business in the past. It was real-life workshops and conferences, and now it's just transitioned to 100% online. So it has changed already over the several years, and it may have to change to some degree again. You know, education is pretty evergreen, and it's always going to be around, and there will always be people needing to upskill in education and that will be the case forever yeah for sure i suppose you could also flip that on its head as well i guess that's the reflection of the business being quite easy to pivot if necessary you know someone like you said probably based in the uk could take it offline and host like say face-to-face workshops instead of doing the online thing so that's worth bearing in mind yeah and that was working really well before covid because it went through a period that was all we were doing. And then there was a period where we were doing face-to-face workshops plus a bit of online. And then COVID just forced the full transition over into online. And even I mean, it's hard to predict what's going to happen this autumn and winter on the face-to-face workshops kind of front. With, but we just have to see. But certainly in the future, when hopefully COVID is less of an issue and things like conferences and workshops, that could be potentially something to think about. But certainly the online stuff should all just be fine to keep going yeah for sure hopefully in the not too distant future we'll have more or well, the world will open up again and can go back to some sort of normality for sure last few questions from me here martin i mean how much support are you offering buyers 
Well, yeah, just as much as required, to be honest. I'd be very emotionally invested in this company in a positive way. So it's my first business. I've grown it over four and a bit years, and it would be great to see it go from strength in the future. So whatever the length of transition period is, be you know happy to offer my insights and whatever is required. Yeah, that's great to hear. Are you willing to commit to a non-compete? Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Absolutely. A break from education is all good for me, to be honest. It's exactly what I need. And are you open to negotiating something like an earnout? I'm very open-minded if the right buyer is interested and there's you know good valid reasons for and for that, then I'll listen to whatever is put before me and it's very possible, yeah. But I would hope the business will go from strength and I would offer any support required to help do that, basically. But yeah, anything that I'm very open to. Awesome. I mean, last question really from me then. If you put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why would you say that this is a business worth buying? I think the room for the growth in the business is very big. There's huge avenues that have only just really scratched the surface, like the blog, good authority now, and it's got a great base, but there's huge room for expansion of the blog. The info courses as well, they're, they're respected, you know, they're tried and tested over you know, several years. We've been running them as workshops. And we know they work. We see the impact they have on people. So it's a good quality brand and also huge room for expansion potentially, particularly in the hands of a knowledgeable person. It's good with things like funnels, potentially Pinterest, blog expansion, all that kind of thing. So a mixture of good quality platform on which to start, but lots of room for growth. It's great stuff. Is there anything else you'd like to share that you think I might have missed? No, it's all good. It's been good to talk to you. And yeah, fingers crossed. Absolutely. Well, all the best. And thanks for joining me in today's interview. We hope that your business gets acquired by the right buyer. Wonderful. Good to speak to you today. Thanks a lot. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 53472. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked the listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.